nothing compares to the promise I have in you.
Sabbath to everybody. I just feel so blessed to be able to be here today, to yeah. have the privilege to just glorify and honor God. On, and uh, it, it's just uh, so glad to be able to do it with you all. So a uh, responsive reading from this morning is going to be out of the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, all together. Having, having a good conscience, conscience that when they, they defame, defame you as evildoers, those, those who revile who your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Amen. amen, amen. And now if we could repeat our mission statement. And grace, as we share God's love, one neighbor, one friend, one relative at a time, until God's character is reproduced in us and everyone we meet. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. I'm so delighted to see all your smiling faces this morning. I would like to extend the warmest, heartfelt welcome from all of us at Berean to those who are visiting today. We are so glad you're here. Um, if you didn't have a chance to check in with us at the front, please stand and uh, introduce yourself if you're visiting with us today. Anyone visiting with us today? Well, even if you don't want to stand and introduce yourself, we're just really happy that you're here, and we hope that the love of Christ will be imparted to you today. Amen. You know, at school, they have a whole bunch of signs scattered around that say, don't be a phone zombie. And I never, you know, like walking around just having your head in the phone. Mm. So I never really noticed the signs until this week when someone ran straight into me. Oh, mercy. He issued a little apology and kind of hurried off, but I thought to myself, am I walking through life like a phone zombie? Ah, am I present? Do I listen? Do I engage? Do I just, um, we may just like bump into somebody metaphorically and rush off without even looking up or giving a second thought. Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God has everything to do with loving your neighbor and loving yourself. Amen. It's about relationships, and God values relationships. So I implore you, don't be a church zombie. Amen. Get your head up. <laughs> love your neighbor. They surround us every day. They're bagging your groceries. They're sitting next to us on the bus. They're raking their leaves in their yard, and they're sitting right next to us here at church. Amen. Our whole world is full of neighbors. You need them, and they need you. So don't just look at people. Really see them. Engage them, know them, and love them. So we're going to extend that love right now to each other as the praise team sings our special song, Welcome to Berean. Amen.
Sabbath Church. Um, this is announcement time. It says all heads of department needs to turn in their budget for 2019. And we have a Hall of Famer in the house. Amen. We have a Hall of Famer in the house, people. Okay. Stand up, Hall of Famer. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> That's our own Hall of Fame in the house, people. Congratulations, Elder Hawkins. Our church board meeting, September 23rd, 1.30 to 2.30, and the business meeting follows. So the business meeting is from 2.30 to 3.30, and all, all are asked to attend, okay? And then we have, you know, Biren is a busy church, right? Okay, so inside the bulletin, there are two inserts. Two of them. Beautiful, beautifully done. Amen. Do I have to tell you what it is? No. Okay, I'm going to give you the dates. The picnic is September 30th from 1 to 6. And last week, we asked the Sabbath School Council to stand, so we're not going to do that this week. And then we have the church picnic, and that's on, actually, the picnic is on the 27th, the 30th, and the, the friends and family day is on the 6th. Oh, I just love this. 
Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> yes. And then our next announcement is Oh Your Life. You all know what that is. And that's going to be October 3 to 7th. Registration is now open. Faith and Finance Workshop. And that's going to be when? Okay, and all are asked to come. I want to, I want to be rich. <laughs> I want to be rich. I don't want to be a millionaire. I really don't. But I want to be rich. That if I spend $500, I don't have to say, oh my God, how am I going to put it back? <laughs> I want to be rich. Amen. So we all need to be there. And that's from 3 to 4.30. And you know who is going to be there? Pastor Charles Sanders. You know who that is? Okay. She said yes. I'm so happy. All right. All right. So the last one is the Berean Eagle Adventure Club meeting will be held second and third Sabbath from 2 to 3 p.m. And the age is 4 to 9. So, so now we are going to our health corner. And what is it about this week? Our health corner. Walking. Walking. Do I have to tell you what walking that you have to do? No, I don't. Do I? You should. <laughs> I should? Are you sure? Yes. You sure, sure, sure. Okay. I said so. All right. The benefits of walking. Who can tell me the first one? God. And the second one? Okay, so and I'm going to read the third one because I want this. Walking leads to what? Longer, Longer life, of course. Who doesn't want to live to 120? <laughs> I do. So, it also says walking lightens the mood. Sometimes we have a facial expression that even though you're not thinking, it shows. Amen. And somebody says, smile. Oh, why are you upset? That's me sometimes. And I'm not unhappy, but I'm not smiling. But the mood is just dark. <laughs> walking lightens the mood, people. It says other benefits of walking includes weight loss, improved sleep, more energy, and slow mental decline. That's a good one. Amen, Amen church. <laughs> Amen. morning church uh, who can guess what I'm up here to talk about <laughs> yes so as I promised last week uh, we made pledged cards and so if you plan on donating if you've started donating we want to keep track um, of who's giving so that um, we can thank you at the end with one of our pins that we share and um, also so that we can budget and know um, how much groundwork that we have to do so we thank you for your support um, the ushers I have one, so if you raise your hand, you can get one from the ushers. And please, 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 if you're giving or going to give, um, fill out a pledge card. And we ask for your name and your email and the amount. And thank you, and have a blessed Sabbath. Uh, Sister Nita, just want to thank you for those announcements. Um, as she shared with you, faith and finance coming up this coming Sabbath. But I want to share with you from the, what the Word of God says concerning uh, what we're going to talk about uh, this com upcoming week. It says, according to uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44, it says, he sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins with a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they had contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. So if you want to find out how to be successful in life, I'm asking, I'm pledging. I'm pleading, sorry, that you uh, be a part of this and let this be a part of you. Because my takeaway from what I just read is faith that is not tested is faith rejected. Mm. 
Because the word of God says, without faith, is in, it is impossible to please him. Two things I've learned as a student of the Bible. Jesus put a lot of emphasis on faith and finances. So as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Faith that is not tested is faith rejected. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Um, this is the time of month uh, that we recognize the woman of the month. This woman is a thoughtful, inspiring, compassionate, beautiful inside and out, loving, dependable, funny, a woman after God's own heart, a teacher, unselfish, nurturing, and virtuous. She has always prayed for me and with me. She's my best friend. I am blessed and have the awesome pleasure and honor of being her daughter. Amen. Pastor Norwood, would you please escort my mother, Joyce Braxton? I never get an opportunity to surprise her because we talk every day. We were just together yesterday. So it's very hard to keep this from her. <laughs> but she is really surprised. Amen. Love you, Mommy. It says, Woman of the Month, Salt's Sisters Abiding in Light and Truth, <coughs> given by Berean Seventh day Adventist Church in recognition of Joyce Braxton for her faithful and outstanding service to the Berean church family, lending a helping hand to others in need with extraordinary talents and forever willing to give up her time always with a gentle and loving spirit. Awarded this day, the 15th of September. Amen. You know I'm a crybaby. But I was wondering, I said, she's here this morning, but then she loves her father-in-law, Greg. So I said, well, they'll do family time. Still, I didn't understand, or, but I said, we'll be together later on. Thank you, church, for thinking of me, and it is what an awesome honor to be able to represent you. Happy Sabbath. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I have this morning the distinct privilege, privilege and honor to introduce to you the editor of Message Magazine. Amen. Amen. She came to Berean to say hi to Berean at this time. Sister Camilla Mont Crawford, please come in your own way and introduce yourself to Berean. Amen. Look closely. You'll see someone who needs to be reached. In everything, be Christ-like and social. Engage your community and explore your world. Meet them where they are because they may never seek him on their own. Find someone to win and share the message. Morning, church family. Berean, Houston, Texas. You know, I think my heart's a little full this morning. I'm a little bit clamped. Because you know how it is, you know, you know, you try to put your little remarks together, but then you walk into a church like this, you guys seem pretty nice and friendly. Is that the way it usually is around here? Are you really? That does my heart warm. There are many churches that you can walk into and it's cold. But this was warm this morning and you all messed me up. 
You know, how can you walk around and talk about, we must be friendly and we must be loving, and you all are loving and friendly. I don't have anything to say this morning. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to walk away. It's wonderful when you can come into a city that you don't know and walk into that city up on a group of believers, right? And then a group of worshipers, amen. And you're feeling like, hey, we are all in here and we are praising the Lord and we're lifting him up and we're one team and one family. I look outside on your, uh, your marquee and you've got the food pantry advertised. Praise God, you're doing the work. You are doing the work, and I'm just here. Like I said, you messed me up. I, you know, I'd like to go and talk about how we have to be warm and free, but you're already there. So let me just uh, encourage you in the way this morning. Message, make, I bring you greeting from the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists, number one, in Columbia, Maryland. I bring you greetings from the Religious Liberty Parle Conference, or they call it Parle, Public Affairs Religious Liberty Conference that's happening downtown here in Houston this week. And I bring you greetings from the one and only, the original Message Magazine. Amen. 120 years God has blessed this magazine. Now you know it's a blessing when there's a magazine that's been around that long. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody, well, so many people have gone to an app and you're working on your mobile phone and everything like this, but God has, and it, God has allowed us to expand into different uh, platforms and different technologies, if you will. But I'm going to tell you one thing. The magazine still works, too. Amen. Do you know why? Because the Holy Spirit yeah. is working. And that's why the love is so important. Message is part of your evangelism portfolio, if you will. Each one of us has a job to do around the people or in and around the, the sphere of influence that we have. So once again, when you call me to come here, and I'm looking at your, your mission statement, one person at a time. That's how the battle is won. Yeah. Have you ever watched a movie? You know, James Bond, whatever it is, he's got all the toys, he's got all the tricks, airplanes, cars, cool things that pop out of his, his hat and his shoes and his, and his watch. But the final climactic scene happens when all the tricks are gone, all of the toys are gone, and it's one-on-one, -on hand-to-hand combat. Is that right? Amen. That's how it works the same way spiritually. It's one-to-one. -one. My love to you, touching you, touching my friends, touching my family, letting them know the invitation. You know, it wasn't until I started working. You know, I, I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist. I grew up in the church. I've known the Lord since my, my mother used to read my Sabbath school lesson from the time I was in Cradle Roll. Y'all, anybody else like that? Yeah. Knew that, remember how we used to stand up and do your 13 verses at the, you know, once a quarter, right? I grew up in the church, but I'm going to tell you the beauty and the reinvigoration that comes with sharing what you got with somebody who needs it. It wasn't until I sat, I was a, 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 I used to work as a public defender, not a public pretender, a public pre yeah. defender, okay? You go in, but then to walk in, little me, little old me, walk into a jail cell with someone who is there desperate, away from their friends and family, facing charges in an uncertain future, and to just to be able to sit there and hold out my hand especially to the young people, the juveniles, crying. You know, you tough and you bad, but when they take you and they lock you up, it's, Mommy, please don't leave me here. But to reach out your hand and say, hold my hand, let me tell you something right now. This is not what God had in mind for you. You may not be able to see it now, there's drama all around you, and this, what you're going through, does not define you. God has a world for you. He has a place for you. He has a job for you. He has a life that is defined differently from what you're seeing around you. I'm here to tell you and extend that invitation right now. You can accept him right now. Things can change for you. Woo! Have you ever had that opportunity to do that? Have you ever? Now, I'm going to ask you. 
go ahead and try it. See how God invigorates your walk. See how Jesus becomes real in your life again. See how the Holy Spirit starts to turn those wheels and gives you the words to say. See how the Holy Spirit lets you see Jesus in a whole new, new different way. Am I taking too much time, Pastor? Oh my goodness, because now you all got me started. Let me tell you something. We can be in the church all of our lives and miss Jesus. We can miss the life transforming experience of knowing him, knowing that he loves us and that we can love him and be with him forever. I think about John, his disciple, one of his three boys, right? I mean, one of his friends, right? It was James, Peter, and John, but John always knew, I'm the, uh, you know, without saying it, the Bible, you know, without saying I'm the favorite, how many times did John say, the one that Jesus loved? John, the one that Jesus loved. Am I right? Doesn't he say that? He writes that in the text, even though, you know, how did, how did they let, how did God let that happen all these thousands of years? He writes it in the text, John, the one that Jesus loves. That's because John is confident in Jesus' love for him, right? You remember that scene there at the Last Supper, and everybody's around. Is it me, Lord? Is it me? Somebody's going to betray you or whatever. John's relaxing on the breast of his best friend. I know it's not me. Who is it, Jesus? Right? That's what he says in there. The one in John, and Jesus said to the one he loved, John. Then you can think about the crucifixion, and Jesus is hanging there, right? And John records that Jesus looked at the one he loved, me, John, take care of my mother. Didn't he write that? He wrote that in the text. Then Jesus rises again. And he's walking, and remember that last whole scene where Jesus reinstates Peter? And John is trying to tell the story about Jesus and Peter, right? But he inserts. Peter looked back at the one Jesus loved, John, right? John was confident. Can you imagine him there on the Isle of Patmos, forsaken by all, persecuted, they wanted to leave him for dead, but the Lord wouldn't let him be destroyed. Receiving the revelation, and in that revelation, he sees walking through the candlesticks and the mist. He can barely see who it is, but as the mist draws away and the smoke from the incense and the candles ebb away, he watches and he looks and clear before his eyes, he discerns the one who loves me. And the one I love is Jesus. You got to see him as the one who loves you. I'm not here to make a commercial as much as I'm here just to encourage you. What the world needs is what you have right here. Do you know that there is an epidemic of loneliness out there? Do you have a spare handshake or a spare hug? Can you spare that with someone else? Do you know that people are dying and sick because no one has loved on them, has validated them? Do you know that? That people, especially men, heart disease, gastrointestinal disease, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, digestive problems, all are increased because people are lonely today. We can fix that. That doesn't take strategy. That doesn't take money. That takes a handshake, a smile, and some kindness. So what am I trying to say? You guys get lots and lots of magazines and material, right? All right. You know the difference between this and this, right? This is for us, right? It tells what's happening in ministries and different churches and who's doing what to further the cause of God. This is about the ministry. Message is the ministry. Do you get it? Do you get it? This is what you order for your friends and family who are in prison, incarcerated, okay? This is what you order for your family, especially that young person who's out there and they're just not sure. 
They're not sure about the Lord. They're not sure the Lord loves them. This is what you send in their mailbox. You don't even have to tell them it was from you, right? This is what you do with your neighbors. You put it in their mailbox. This is what you do when you like Message Magazine and you share from Facebook our daily devotional. Do you want to see someone you love in heaven? Yes. I'm just encouraging you to share the message. Last thing I will say today, if you didn't come prepared to do it today, I'm going to ask you to go on to messagemagazine.com. Subscribe. If you don't have a friend or a family or a relative, somebody that you want to uh, send message to, you can donate because this year it is our goal to reach 100,000 people who are incarcerated, their friends and their family. And you can help us reach that goal, messagemagazine.com. Will you pray for Message Magazine? Yes. Let's work together. I don't have to give you no lecture. God's already working here with you. Praise God for you, Berean. Happy Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Sister Crawford, I, uh, I, just, I just found out some good news. We like good news, amen? amen. At Berean, we have a Message Magazine account. Are y'all quiet? Amen. And we are, we are committed to at least 50 subscriptions to Message Magazine. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited about that. Um, our message from Pathfinders, uh, for, your, for your donations, for your pledges, please place them in the offering plate when they pass around. You can place them in your offering plate when they pass around. When they pass around. Um, I'm excited this morning just to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And there's a young lady who's here, and I met her um, last month, and she can sing some song. There's a leak in this old building. Y'all know that song? So she's here today. She's here today, and sometime today in the program, maybe for offering, we maybe can do that. We'll ask her to come up. Ask her to come up and sing. There's a leak in this old building. Can we do that, church? Amen. Amen. So I came to praise the Lord. I came to lift my holy hands. I came to shout for Jesus. He's real. He's real. So I'm asking you, family and friends and visitors, please let God be God. I see, uh, I, I see, I see a couple from Berean who was here last Sabbath. Welcome back, family. Amen. Amen. We can do amen. I am excited how Berean family is growing. I don't know about you, but the best is yet to come. Amen. Every day, but 
my power You keep on blessing me your name. Can you come up at this time and be prepared to bless us when we call for the tithe and offering, if you don't mind. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, church. Um, as I was thinking of uh, tithe and offering, I thought of our Pathfinder theme for this year and going forward. And excuse me, our theme is chosen. <clears throat> So I began to ask myself, what does it mean to be chosen by God? And who gets to be chosen by God? And the character that we have for our Pathfinders is David. And um, David, as a young boy, he made a stand for God. And if we look at all the characters of the Bible, they weren't perfect people. They weren't the wealthiest or the best looking or, or the bravest, but they took a stand. And what does that have to do with tithe and offering? Well, Tithe and offering is a way that we can um, take a stand for God. And we can allow ourselves to be chosen. And it's one of the very ministries. And so as we give to the ministry of the church that allows um, our community to be fed, that allows uh, us to have um, children to come in, that allows us to have prison ministries and nursing home ministries, um, we, we not only give our money, but we give our time and our talent. And so you have different um, officers of each ministry who gives. And so I ask of you today to think about what it means to be chosen because um, the people of the Bible were no different than us and no special than us. And God is not a respecter of persons. And so all it, all it takes is that um, just asking God to use us in any way possible. And tithe and offering is one of those ways. I will now ask the deacons to come forward to collect this morning's tithe and offering. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this ministry. We pray over the tithe and offering that will be collected, God, that will go to the furtherance of your work, Lord, that you will um, expand Berean, God, expand the ministries, and not just touch the members, but touch um, our community who comes to us, Lord. Bless them and bless their needs. Um, keep us all close to you and save us when you shall come again. Um, as you said, store up your, your treasures in your kingdom because the things of this earth will pass away, God. So let us freely give, let us be open, and let us trust you to supply all of our needs. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> There's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. Whoa, my soul has got to move. My soul has got to move. I found a leak. Y'all can help me. This old building, 
and my soul has come. I've got another building I made by man. Oh, this old building keeps on leaning, and my soul.
I've got another feeling Not me Not me My me You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Please rise. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit. Before the time in the field, set the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, set the Lord of hosts. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. worship team come forward. I want to bring your attention to the bulletin for our sick and shut-in, special prayer, and anything else that keeps you up at night. Amen? Amen. I would like for each one to keep the Walker and Sterling family in prayer. Um, there are others that have lost loved ones this year including my mom, who lost her brother, uh, two brothers, less, a brother and a sister less than 30 days apart from each other. So keep everybody in the Berean orbit in prayer as our praise and worship leaders come to us this morning. Before we begin, we just want to ask the congregation to remember this is community service day, so we may need to press in a little bit so our, 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 our guests can have a place to sit and we don't have to be walking over you, man.
morning, church. Before I come to you in, on, in the mornings on Sabbath, and it's kind of a song, I go to our pastor and I'll say, Pastor, is there anything that you want us to pray for this morning? He started on the elders' prayer call. I mean, that was weeks ago, and I guess now I'm on auto autopilot. <laughs> as soon as I got out of the car, I went up and I said, Pastor, is there anything you would like for us to pray for this morning? And he shared this name with me. The name that he shared was Zante Wallace. Now, some of us may or may not know who Zante Wallace is, but I believe the Walkers know. And Zante is a young man, early 20s, I believe. And he was elected to be on the city council for the town of Prairie View. Amen. And we're praying for Zante. He's a young man trying to do great things. You see, the wonderful thing, God doesn't ask us to do great things. He only asks us to do small things great. So Zante Williams is on the prayer list this morning. He's also asked me to put the CJC Council and Religious Liberty Conference on their prayer list this morning because every day right before our eyes we see our li religious liberties being snatched from us even without a whimper. We don't know what happens when you make America great again. Message Magazine, I threw that in there, sister. I didn't say that, but I'm throwing that in there for you and your staff and all of the church publications of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They all have an awesome role, and I appreciate everything that you're doing. What's keeping you up at night? What's keeping you up at night? Every one of us got something that wakes you up in the middle of the night. It may be more month than money. And may you, maybe you look in the cupboards and the cupboards are bare. Maybe you need to go somewhere and you realize that the tank does not have enough gas to get you the 15 miles down the road that you need to go. I'm coming to you this morning telling you that you can either wear your hope, wear your hurt, or you can wear your hope. You see, the contagiously calm person is the one who reminds others that God is still in control. You see, on Wednesday night, our pastor has opened up a new sermon a message series, and I'm sure you're going to get tidbits of that today, but I'm saying especially if you need a midweek pick-me-up, get me out of my seat, send me down the road. Hey, there is armor here for you. See, pastor is sharing, don't leave home without it. I'm talking about the full armor of the God. Amen. Okay, I'm going to toss that one out. Oh, I didn't read it. God's sovereignty bids us to fight the onslaught of fret with the sword that is etched with the words, but God. Peace happens when people pray. Last but not least, before you lash out, lash out in fear, look up in faith. It's prayer time. It's altar call time. It's prayer time. 
I'm going to say, if you have something on your heart that you want to pray for, and if you have written out your prayer cards, because I realize that some of you aren't here on Wednesdays, you can drop them in the box. They're here just for you. There's prayer answered, then there are prayer requests. Amen? So at this time, I'm going to ask all of you, if you will, if you're interested or have feel the need to come forward, now is your time. that we come before you. But Lord, we come as empty vessels pouring out ourselves but waiting to be filled by you. This morning, dear Lord, uh, we're praying for Message Magazine and the mission that it has in front of it. We pray for each one on the staff of Message Magazine, uh, Sister Monk, and her, her own special way as she leads out. Because I remember the old slogan, as the message goes out, people come in. Lord, remember all the rest of the church publications. Lord, remember everything that they have on their plates. Lord, we remember Zante, Wallace this morning. We pray for him. Lord, we pray for him, not for fame, for fortune, or anything, but we pray for him for wisdom. Lord, that wisdom that will pass all understanding. Lord, we, we, we pray that you will keep him forever in your watchful care. Remember our Religious Liberty Organization and the conference this week and all those who have an awesome task of keeping us informed about the things we should know about our religious liberties. Lord, we pray for them and their awesome duties and the things that they must share. Lord, I present our pastor this morning. Lord, as he continues to lead out, may we continue to look up that we will become that church that truly walks the mission that is worship God, love each other, and tell his story. Father, we pray for each member here. We pray for the, the challenges that they face. We pray for each and every item that wakes up each member sometimes at night. Lord, we pray for the unknown and unspoken prayer requests that members have from time to time in this congregation. Lord, we pray for those that have been in the path of this hurricane for the last few days. And Lord, as the flooding continues, we pray for each one in their safety. Lord, we pray for the first responders, Lord, who have to go out and seek and save those that are stuck. Lord, we pray for their safety. Lord, we pray for the Wilmington area in North Carolina, and even those we pray, Father, for your spirit to touch the elements and calm the waves in the sea. Lord, in this morning, as my feeble mind sometimes forget, we realize, Lord, you're a God that has never forgotten us, neither have you ever forsaken us. We pray this prayer not because we're worthy, but we pray it through your loving son, Jesus' name, and it is for his sake we say, amen.
Hallelujah. Has God been good to anybody today? Did he wake you up this morning? Started you on your way? Gave you food when you're hungry? Shelter in the time of storm? God's been good to me. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Sister Crawford, I want to say I am humbled and blessed that you accepted the invitation to come to Little Old Berean. Amen. You know, in here in, in Berean, we believe in the transparent ministry. So let me be transparent. So many times in life when God elevates us to certain positions, we forget where we came from. So Sister Crawford, I thank you. You haven't forgot where you came from. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So thank you again for coming today, amen. So if you will, go with me to the word of God this morning. I won't keep you long. I, I think we had a sermon today. A sermon in song, a sermon for Message Magazine, but I have a word from the Lord today, amen. Amen. First Peter 3, 15 through 16. Uh, First Peter 3, 15 through 16. But in your hearts, reveal Christ as Lord. And always, somebody say always. always. Be ready to give a defense to everyone. Someone say everyone. everyone. Who ask you a reason for the hope that is in you. Well, with meekness and fear. Oh, hallelujah. I can preach this. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always, someone say always. always. Be prepared to give an answer to everyone. Someone say everyone. everyone. Who asked you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Heavenly most gracious Father, I come to you, Lord. Asking you to move Pastor Noah out the way. Speak to your people today. Remind us that you are God and you are God alone. Remind us that we are on a commission to go through all the world telling them about the good news. So God, have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, Lord, is my prayer. Amen. In this life, you and I will be asked a lot of questions. Even before this day is over, somebody somewhere is going to ask somebody a question. Because questions are a part of life. Questions, my musicians, help people find out who you are. What you are about. Your likes and your dislikes. They help you find what are your goals in life. Questions brings clarity to a situation. Here's the spoiler alert, here's the spoiler alert. I wish I had some spoiler alert music, amen. Spoiler alert, questions are not going away anytime soon. We have questions when we apply for a job. Questions when our kids get ready for college. Questions when we get married. Can I stop right there? Do you want to know why many marriages don't last? Because before marriage, they don't ask the right questions. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. So what are some of those right questions? What's your credit score? Mm. I'm just giving you some advice. Right questions. Do you plan on working in this marriage? I'm just helping somebody out. Amen, somebody. Amen, Philip. Right questions. Do you plan to be faithful? We talking about some right questions. And Flash Bill, I just need to tell you this. If you ask, you think about getting married, uh, Philip or, or Mike or Isaac, whoever it may be, just know Pastor Noah would expect you to do some premarital counseling. Or y'all quiet this morning. There is a need for questions. Questions a spouse may ask their other spouse or a mother or a parent may ask their child, here's some questions. Where have you been? Who have you been with? What were you doing? Who were you doing it with? Help me, Holy Ghost. Because in this life, we will have a lot of questions. 
Some questions will be easy to answer, Elder Caesar, and some may be very hard to answer. And all these questions that will we, be, we will be confronted with in this lifetime, there is one question this morning that i got to deal with this morning. There is one question that the majority of people assembled in this divine place have to ask for themselves. They have to answer it for themselves. Ask me the question. What's the question? Amen. I will tell you, amen. Here's the question. What will you say when someone puts you on the spot and asks you this question? Why are you a Seventh-day Adventist Christian? Y'all quiet. What will you say when someone at Walmart, someone at Kroger, someone at your school faith say, why do you go to church on the Sabbath? You must understand, I can't answer this question for you, but I can answer it for myself. If someone asked me, Pastor Norwood, I, I heard that you were a Methodist pastor. I heard, I heard that you, were, you was in seminary, and I, I heard, and which is a true statement, by the way, why in the world would you leave being a pastor in the Methodist denomination to become a seven-day Adventist Christian? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Understand, when you answer this question, you're going to have some haters. Can I tell you about my haters? Because when I made a decision to become a seven-day Adventist Christian, I had some people in my family who got mad at me. Why are you going down to that church to get baptized? Aren't they a cult? Come a little closer. Adventism is not a cult. Help me, Holy Ghost. Well, they're different. Yet they are different. They're peculiar people. We are royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Why in the world are you a seven-day Adventist Christian? Let me ask you this. The question, let me answer the question. The question is, the answer can be found in the title, Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian because I believe in the seven-day Sabbath. Help me, Holy Ghost. Six days should we labor and do all thy way, but the Sabbath, somebody say the Sabbath. Yeah. It's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yeah. Here's the prophet Isaiah. You know, I believe in the fourth commandment, Elder Kelly, but I think this is a better commandment. Isaiah 58, 13 through 14. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing your as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, if you honor it by not doing your own way and doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you... You, Sister Norwood, you, Elder Rose, you, family, will find the joy in the Lord. Amen. And God says this, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land huh? and feast in the inheritance of your father Jacob. For the, the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I'm glad leaving it on the screen. I like that. Watch this. Watch this. See, we get caught up. We get caught up. We get caught up. Well, Pastor, I'm not working on the Sabbath. I'm good. Come a little closer, family. What kind of conversations are you having on the Sabbath? Are y'all quiet? Because, see, when you honor the Sabbath, you got to watch what you say. Come a little closer, young people. You have six days to play your video games. Are y'all quiet? You have six days to talk about the NBA, the NFL. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You have six days, but this is God's holy day. Oh, y'all quiet. This is a sacred, and I tru sacred day, and I truly believe some of us have gotten so comfortable now forgetting that this is God's holy day. So let me help your parents out. Well, Pastor Norwood, my child got ADHD, elemental plea, and they just don't want to keep still. And I get that. I get that. I get that. So let me help you out. I do not have a problem with electronic devices in the church. So let me help you out. If you got your child a cell phone, an iPad, here's what you can do. Once you put on that iPad or cell phone, the Superbook. How about Veggie Tales? Or well, y'all know Superbook is a religious cartoons. Amen. Y'all know what Superbook is that help explain to our young people what creation is all about. So instead of allowing them mm, to play video games on God's holy Sabbath. Want you give them some con something constructive, amen. Because this is what's gonna happen when they get a little older, when they start talking back. 
Mm -mm. They're going to say, well, you let me do it when I was little. You can let me do it now. Help me, Holy Ghost. So I believe in the Sabbath. Seventh day, Sabbath. Advent. Do you do realize what Advent means? What does Advent mean, you great scholars? Come on, the what? Second coming. So on seventh day, I believe in the Sabbath. Advent, I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Christian, I'm a Christian. Because watch this. You got Adventists who are not seventh-day Adventists. You got seven-day who are not Adventists. And you got seven-day Adventists who are not Christian. Help me, Holy Ghost. I am a seven-day Adventist Christian. There's a difference. Mm. Watch this. Being a seven-day Adventist Christian does not mean I'm better than you. And you're not better than me. Because the ground is level at the cross. Help me, Holy Ghost. It does not mean that because I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian that I get an automatic pass to go to heaven. All have sinned. Somebody say all. all. Have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian, number, Christian because, number one, I love God. You got some people who love God in here? I love me some God. He's my provider. He's my way maker. He's my healer. He's my shepherd. He woke me up this morning. I'm getting good all by myself. I love me some God. He is God all by himself. Aren't you glad that God don't need a board to make a decision in your life? Hey, you will be out by yourself. And because I love God, Sister Crawford, because I love God, I love people. I love me some people. I love you, Berin. I really, truly, I get excited. You saw what I'm about, you energize the button. Because I get excited, hey, when I'm in the presence of God's people. Are y'all quiet? I may not always like what they do. Yeah. All the choices they make. But I have to love them. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. First John. 4, 19 through 21. 1 John 4, 19 through 21. We love because he first loved. Now watch, can I break this down, Elder Kelly? He loved us when we was in our wretchedness. Hey. He loved us when we was in the club doing things we should not do. Ah, oh, hey. Some of us are still in the club. Hey. He loved us before we loved him. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Mercy. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this commandment. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. Can I, who, who's my brother? Who's my sister? Each and every one of you. Whether we are biological or not, you, we, are, we are in God's family. You are my sister. You are my brother. I'm your brother. Amen, somebody. I don't know where we get this concept from. Because you are darker hue, you can't be my brother or sister. Because you are lighter hue, you are not my brother and sister. The devil is a liar. As long as in the family of God, you are my brother and my sister. Mm. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Because I want to be blessed. Hey, ha, ha, ha. Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm being transparent. So, so I know what some of you are saying. Can I, can I tell you, can I release the tension? Some of you are saying, Pastor, I know people who are not Seventh-day Adventists. They're blessed. That's a good question. Amen. That's a good statement. Watch this. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Hey. So since you asked the question, that, that you, since you've made the statement that you know people who are Seventh-day Adventists who are not Seventh-day Adventists and are blessed, let me ask you a question. Do you know where those blessings came from? And are those blessings only material things? Because the Bible says, what profits a man, hey, to gain the whole world and what? Lose his soul. Because you got some people working 60 hours a week and never see their family. You got some people doing some shady things, got a lot of money. Come on, Washington, D.C. Oh, help me, help me, Holy Ghost. We cannot determine a blessing by the material things that we see. Huh? 
So you can have worldly blessings, but God does not have a problem with. But the problem is, though those worldly blessings have you. You can get a new car every year, a 5,000 square foot house, uh, just invite me over, a job that pays six to seven figures, but that does not mean that you're going to heaven. Having those material things or, or not having them does not determine whether or not you are you know, you're going to heaven and that you are saved. What's important is this. Are you following the commandments of God? Why am I a Seventh-day Adventist Christian? Number two, because I love the Bible. I love the Word of God. And here's what the Word says in Psalm 119, 105. Your Word is a lamp for my feet, a light unto my path. Psalms 23, y'all know it. The Lord, hey, is my shepherd. I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshed my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Oh, I like this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, watch this. See, there's a lot of fear in the world. Don't you know that the media making thousands of dollars, off, millions of dollars off of fear? But when you have the word of God, you don't have to be afraid of nothing, nobody. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. Oh, I like this. In the presence of my enemies. Let me, make, let me put the prophet, Pastor Norwood version. You prepare me in the presence of my haters. Hey, help me, Holy Ghost. You see, when you live for God, Elder Kelly, you're going to have some haters. They're going to want to know, how did you get that teaching job? They're going to want to know, how did you get that? Because I'm a child of God. <laughs> God will prepare a table, a banquet in the presence of your enemies. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, y'all like this. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I believe in the spirit of prophecy. The writings of LNG right now, watch this, watch this. Can I, can I, can I, can I educate today, Sister Crawford? Let me educate. Even Sister White said she is the what? Lesser light. You see, watch this. Well, let me put this in her words, Sister Norwood. This is what she, she said in Selected Messages, Book 3. Write it down, go research it. Selected Messages, Book 3. You see, Sister White was at a conference, a general conference, when she made this statement. When you make the Bible your food, the principles, the elements of your character, you will know better how to receive counsel from God. Right. I exalt the precious word before you today. And I'll buckle your seatbelt. Somebody about to shout, do not. Somebody say, do not. Do this is what Sister White said. Repeat what I, I have said, saying, Sister White said this. Huh? Sister White said that. Oh, y'all quiet. Hey, uh, I'm all by myself. Find out what the Lord God of Israel says. Huh? Yes. And then do what he commands. Yes. Oh, see, see, y'all missed that. Y'all missed y'all shout. I know some of you are not Seventh-day Adventists. Once you be along, around, around, around here long enough, some are going to come up to you. Well, Sister White said this. You said, them, well, your pastor said, go select the messages, book three. Because Sister White said, do not say, Sister White said this, and Sister White said that. Find out for yourself. Oh, I'm saying all by myself. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian because I want to go to heaven. I may not, watch this, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian because I believe in the health message. Oh, yeah. can, I, can I release the tension? I know, I know I'm not falling like I should. Amen, somebody. And neither are me nor you. Hey, hey. I'm just, we're just being transparent. I believe in the health message. And I may not be falling like I should, but I know us coming together, working together. Amen, somebody. We can follow it together. Mm. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because... I want to live a life-changing, life-sustaining, life-transforming message. I believe in God's Christian family. 
Oh, y'all gonna like this. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist because, because I believe in social justice. Hey! Amen. Come here, did you know, did you know, did you know? Y'all know who Sojourner Truth is? Yeah. Did you know she became a Seventh-day Adventist? Oh, y'all quiet. Y'all didn't know that. When you go to Pine Forge, where my beautiful wife is from, amen. When I went up there, I saw the underground railroads that she used to free the slaves. She believed in social justice. The Adventist church, in its infancy, believed in social justice. I don't know what happened, Sister Crawford. But God said, come back. Come back to who, who you, I called you to be. Did you know? Did you know that God believes in social justice? Equality and fairness for all people? What did, what, did, what did God tell Moses to go tell the president? I mean, to go tell Pharaoh. What did God tell Moses to go tell him, let my people go? God believes in social justice. And if God believes in it, this message believes in it, we should believe in it too. Hear what the Bible says, Exodus 21, 1 through 3. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, out of the house of bondage. Have no other God before me. Understand why I love this message. Because I believe in social justice and this church. will not let no one tell you they don't like this people. They don't like this people. The real message of this church is social justice. It's preparing lives for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I believe in Revelation 14, the three angels' message. Yeah. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven and who had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. A second angel fallen and said, fallen, fallen, Babylon is the great which made all nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. The third angel father said, loud voice, if anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on their forehead or on the hand, they too will drink from the wine of God's fury. So let me break that down to somebody. Babylon is spiritual confusion. Oh, y'all quiet. You see, understand, let me tell you this. Let me tell you a story. Y'all may not know this, but understand, the Catholic church used to be the church. Amen? Yeah. But watch this. Did you know the Catholic church tried to change the Sabbath from Sabbath to Sunday? Did y'all know that? And if you don't believe me, you can Google it. Yeah. Yeah. So spiritual infusion is anything that goes against the word of God. Spiritual, come out of Babylon. Spiritual infusion when you're a pastor and you try to sleep with everything that moves. Spiritual confusion. When you position of authority and you're using your power to oppress people, spiritual confusion. God called this church to talk to people, to be a voice in the wilderness, crying, come out of her, my children. There are other reasons why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I believe in community service. Hey! This church... The, the Adventist church believe in teaming with FEMA and other agencies to provide relief to the people of God. I believe in that. I believe in that, Elder. I believe in community service. I believe in making a difference in our community. So we got to understand, you know, there, 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 there's, a, there's, this, there's this thing where, you know, let's just give them a, a revelation seminar. I believe in a revelation seminar. I really do. I really do. Elder Kelly, don't put me out. Don't write the conference. But what about the ministry of Jesus? Jesus touched people every day. Jesus healed them. He delivered them because the Bible said, I come to set the captive free. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm just telling you about Pastor Norwood. You can't take and tell me nothing about nobody if I'm hungry. In fact, you don't want to be around me when I'm hungry. Hey, come on. You can't tell me anything about nothing. I don't know. I don't want to know about 20 fundamental beliefs. I don't know about this. I don't want to know about that. If I'm, if I don't have nowhere to stay. If I'm naked. If I'm hungry. I don't want to hear it. But when we do what God tells us to do, 
women clothe the naked, feed the hungry, find shelter to the homeless. That's when we're doing the message. That's why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. Why am I a seven-day Adventist Christian? I can't leave here without telling you my other, my other true reasons, and I'm going to let you go. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I love me some Jesus. Hey! Amen. I love my Lord and Savior. I love me the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the great I am. I love some Jesus. Why do I love Jesus? I'm glad that you asked because he's my healer. He's my friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's my mother to the motherless. He's the father to the fatherless. I love me some Jesus. When you don't talk to me, when you get mad at me at a board meeting, I don't care because I got me some Jesus. <laughs> oh, y'all quiet. Y'all don't want to hear the truth. People ask why I get so excited because I see Jesus every day. Because I know with Jesus on my side, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Why do I love me some Jesus? Because he's coming again. No more student loans. Help me, Holy Ghost. My sister said no more pain. No more suffering. No more shame. Because Jesus is coming soon. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta close with this. I got to let you go. I know you're ready to go. I'll come down here for this. Give me the mic on. Give me the power. Hallelujah. So I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I love God. Because I believe in this message. Because I believe in the social justice message of the Adventist church. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I love God's people. Each and every one of you. I really do love you. I may not know you, but I love you because God loves me. I don't care if you're a millionaire or trying to get a dollar. I still love you. Why? Because look at this. Jesus loved me when I was in my sin. And because Jesus loves me, I have to love you. So I love God. I love this message. I love the health message. And like you said, it's on video. You promised me we're going to work together to do the health message. Amen. Right? Amen. And so I love the Seventh-day Adventist church. I'm a Christian because of Jesus. Because I want to be blessed, Sister Norwood. Don't you want to be blessed too? Watch this. What did, what did the Bible say? Forgiving all my iniquities. Healing all my diseases. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a healer. He keeps you when you don't want to keep yourself. Why well, am I a seven-day Adventist Christian? Because of all those things. But I can't forget about the one thing, Elder Kelly. I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian because I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, have you met the ghost? I think somebody said that when I first got here in June 30th, have you met the Holy Ghost? I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian believer, liver, sustainer because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you should receive power. Holy Ghost power. Sustaining power. Transforming power. Healing power. Didn't the Bible say greater things will you do? Didn't Jesus heal? Didn't Jesus comfort? So what are you waiting for? We can't do any of things without the Holy Ghost. So because, because the reason I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, Barbara, is because I want those things and more. I believe those things. I believe this message. I believe in God. I do believe, family, that we are living in life last days. And we need some power. Things are worse right now. We are actually living in prophecy Right now, even as I preach, we're living in prophecy. So we need some power to go through the storm. I like what, do you, know, you know that song, sister? There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's coming this way. And if your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. There's a storm on the ocean, and it's coming this way. So we need a message where we can anchor in so we will not drift away. So I don't know what your reason is. But there was my reason why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. Because I believe this message. Amen. And what God did for me, he can do for you too. Yeah. If you're dealing with drugs, he can get rid of the drugs. Yeah. Dealing with some kind of addiction, God can take care of it. <clears throat> dealing with fear or depression, give it over to God. It's not by chance or by coincidence that you are here today listening to this message. God has a word for you. 
These are the reasons why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. Here's the question to you. Why are you a seven-day Adventist Christian? And for those who are not today, my family, my friends, you may be asking the question, what's all about? What is this all about to be a seven-day Adventist Christian? All you got to do is join the church. Oh, y'all quiet. Amen. That was my feel. Amen. If you want a, a life, a better life, an abundant life, because the Bible says, I come to give you life, abundant life. If you want that abundant life, you can join the church today and find out how we, as a family of God, can come together, lift up our holy hands, and worship God in spirit and in truth. Oh, y'all quiet this morning. That's why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. Here's a question. Why are you a seven-day Adventist Christian? Amen. Let me touch the why I'm a seven-day Adventist Christian. 
And here's my appeal to you. If you want to join this local assembly, to be part of God's family, to know more about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, come down this afternoon. Give me your hand and give God your heart so you can find out more about why we believe what we believe. So you can be part of the Berean family. So that you can see the power of God in your life. Do you want to join? Do you want to be part of this family? Do you want God to move in your life unlike He has ever moved before? Is that your will? Is that your pleasure? You can come down to the altar. Come down to the altar. God has a plan for your life. God speaking to you. God speaking to your heart. God is speaking to your heart. If you desire a transform membership, you can just raise your hand. You can just raise your hand if that's your desire to be visiting and you want to transfer a membership. Just let us know. Let us know. And watch God will do. And we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. So here's the first appeal. If you want to join this church, be part of God's family. If you want to do a transfer of membership, let us know. Let us know. And here's the last appeal. Here's the last appeal. You may not understand what it means about the spirit of prophecy, or you may not understand about the last days. But one thing I do know that you understand, that you love God. Amen. If you love God and you're able to stand, just stand on your feet. And we're going to pray to God so God can bless us. If you really love God and you want God to move in your life. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for sending your son to die for us, for loving us before we could even love ourselves, God. You know the hairs on our head. You know our very thoughts. We cannot run from you. We can hide from other people. We can pretend, God, but you see every ounce of us, and you love every bit of us, even the imperfect pieces. So today I pray over this congregation, Lord. I pray over each and every one that is here from the young baby to the oldest elder God. We thank you for their life. We know that they have been put on this earth for a special purpose, God. Continue to reveal yourself to them, to provide for their needs. But more important than their physical needs, God, provide for their spiritual needs, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit to draw close to them and manifest yourself in their lives. We trust you, God. Our hope is built on you. This world is uncertain, God. The things are passing away. People are dying. Um, people are getting sick. People have all kind of issues. But you are not blind to these issues. You are not deaf to these issues. But you are a God more powerful than these issues. So today we seek that power, Lord. We seek the power over all forces, all principalities and powers, all confusion, God. We seek your truth and we seek your light. Save us all in your kingdom when you shall come. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Everybody here blessed? Amen. I hope you're at least about a quarter of an inch as blessed as I feel because that was a very powerful sermon. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you. So let us bow our heads for a closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again I thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you for this Church of Berean, Lord. I thank you for the freedom that we have here in this country, Lord, that we may congregate and worship you without any fear of persecution or, or of any kind, Lord. Thank you for this privilege that we have here. Heavenly Father, I uh, thank you for, for Pastor Norwood, how you use him to deliver your word, and in so many other ways as he leads this church. Father God, I lift him in prayer to you. 
that you may continue to give him your anointing, Lord, that you may continue to use him. Bless him, bless his family, Lord. I pray for a blessing upon this church, this congregation, Lord, and as we leave this place, let us never depart from your presence. On the contrary, Lord, let us always have our eyes fixed on you and only on you, Lord, that the things we do in our lives may be according to your will and just to represent you, Father God, that we may be able to touch others, that you may be able to use us in such a purpose, Father God. So thank you again, Lord, for all your blessings, for all your mercies, for being such a wonderful and loving Father. It is in your holiest of names that I pray. Amen.